Safety first. You and driver education. Sometimes to tell a secret, you first have to teach a lesson. We're going to begin our lesson tonight on an early warm summer evening, overlooking the Beltsville Agricultural Farms in suburban Maryland. <laughs> Less than a mile away, the US-1 wends its way past one-room revival churches, the porno drive-in, and boarded up motels with for sale signs tumbling down. <laughs> like I said, it's a warm summer evening. Here on the land the US Department of Agriculture owns, the smell of farm animal on the air is thick. The smells of hay and clover mixing with the smells of the leather dashboard. You can't still imagine how Maryland used to be before the malls took over. <laughs> this countryside was once dotted with farmhouses. From their porches, you could have witnessed the Civil War raging in the front fields. Oh yes, there's a moon over Maryland tonight. Rising, spilling in to the car where I sit beside a man who is old enough to be my, um, did I, did I mention how still the night is? Damp soil, tranquil air. It's the kind of night that makes a middle-aged man with a mortgage feel like a country boy again. It's 1969. I am very old, very cynical of the world, and I know it all. In short, I am 17 years old, parking off a dark lane with a married man on an early summer night. I love the smell of your hair. Uh-huh. Lord, um... <laughs> man could die happy like this. Well, don't... <laughs> what shampoo is this? Herbal Essence. Herbal Essence. <laughs> I'm gonna buy me some, uh, Herbal Essence, and when I'm all alone in the house, I'm gonna get in the bathtub, Uncap the bottle and. Uh... It'll be good. <laughs> what? Stop being bad. What do you think I was gonna say? What do you think I was gonna do with the shampoo? I don't wanna know. I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> I was gonna wash my hair. That's all. No. Oh. What do you think I was gonna say? I don't know. Nothing. Something nasty. <laughs> With shampoo? Lord gal, your mind. <laughs> and whose fault is it? Not mine. No, no, I've got the mind of a Boy Scout. Right. A horny Boy Scout. Oh, well, Boy Scouts are always horny. <laughs> what do you think the first merit badge is for? There, you're going to be nasty again. Nope. Not me. I'm all good. Don't change the subject. I was talking about how good I am. You ever gonna... Let me show you how good I am? Don't you go over the line now. I'm not. I'm not gonna do anything that you don't want me to do. And I've been good all week. You have? Yes. All week. Not a single drink. Good boy. Do I get a reward? For not drinking? A small one. Just let me undo you. I'll do you back up. Alright, but be quick about it. You know, it's amazing the way you can undo the hooks with one hand through my blouse. Years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> You'd make an incredible brain surgeon with that dexterity. Yeah, I'll bet Clyde. Oh, what's the name of that boy who's taking you to the prom? Claude Saunders. Yeah, Claude Saunders. Yeah, I'll bet it takes him two hands, lights on, and you helping him to get the third base. Maybe. 
Can I, uh, kiss them? Please? I don't know. Won't make a grown man beg. Just one kiss. I'm going to lift your blouse. It's getting cold. It's not why you're shivering. How's that feel? It's okay. I'll tell you. You can keep all the cathedrals of Europe. Just give me a second with these. these celestial orbs. Uncle Peck, we've got to go. I've got graduation rehearsal at school tomorrow morning, and you should get on home to Aunt Mary. All right, little bit. Don't call me that anymore. I'm a big girl now, Uncle Peck, as you know. That's right, going on 18. Now kittens will turn into cats. I live all week long for these few minutes with you. You know that? I'll drive. Idling in the neutral gear. In most families, relatives get names like Junior or Brother or Bubba. In my family, if we call someone Big Papa, not because he's tall. In my family, folks tend to get nicknamed for their genitalia. Uncle Peck, for example. My mama's adage was the titless wonder. And my cousin Bobby got branded for life as BB for blue balls. And of course, we were so excited to have a baby girl that when the doctor brought you in and said, it's a girl, it's a baby girl, I just had to see for myself. So we whipped your diapers down and parted your chubby little legs. And right there in between your legs was just, just a, a little, little bit. bit. And I remember you were so tiny when you were first born that you fit right in your Uncle Peck's outstretched hand. That's a fact. I held you one day old, right in this hand. Even with my family background, I was 16 or so before I realized that pedophilia did not mean people who loved a bicycle. Driving in first gear. 1969, a typical family dinner. Look, Grandma, little Bit's getting to be as big in the bust as you are. Mother. Could we please change the subject? Well, I hope you are buying her some decent bras. I never had decent bra growing up in the depression and now my shoulders are just crippled. Crippled from the weight hanging on my shoulders. The dents from my bra straps are big enough to put your finger in. Here, let me show you. Grandma, please don't undress at the dinner table. <sighs> I thought that the entertainment came after dinner. This is how it always starts. My grandfather, Big Papa, will chime in next with... Yup. If Lil' Big gets any bigger, we're gonna have to buy a wheelbarrow to carry in front of her. Damn it. How about those Colts on Sunday, Big Papa? The only sport Big Papa followed was chasing Grandma around the house. Or we could write to Kate Smith, ask her for some of her used brassieres she don't want anymore. She could maybe give it to Lil' Bit here. I can't stand it. I can't. Now, honey, that's just their way. I tell you, Grandma, Lil' Bit's at that age. She's so sensitive, you can't say boo. I like some privacy. That's all. Okay? Some goddamn privacy. Well, at least she didn't use the savior's name. And Big Papa wouldn't let a dead dog lie. No siree. Well, she better stop being so sensitive. Because five minutes before Lil' Bit turns the corner, her tits turn first. That's it. That's it. Little Bit, you can't let him get to you, then he wins. I hate him. Hate him. And that's fine but hate him and eat a good dinner at the same time. 
Miss Gumbo is really good, Grandma. Of course, Lil Bit's got a big surprise coming for her when she goes to that fancy college this fall. Big Papa, let it go. What does she need a college degree for? She's got all the credentials she'll need on her chest. Maybe I want to learn things. Read. Rise above my cracker background. Whoa, now, Little Bit. Oh, what kind of things do you want to read? There's a whole semester course, for example, on Shakespeare. <laughs> Shakespeare! Shakespeare, that's a good one. Shakespeare is really going to help you in life. Well, I think that it's wonderful. And on scholarship. How is Shakespeare going to help her lie on her back in the dark? You're getting old, Big Papa. You're going to die. Very, very soon. Maybe even tonight. And when you get to heaven, God's going to be a beautiful black woman in a long white robe. She's going to look at your chart and say, uh-oh, fornication, dog ugly mean with blood relatives. Oh, uh-oh, voted for George Wallace. Well, one last chance. If you can name the play, all will be forgiven. And then she'll quote, the quality of mercy is not strained. Your answer, oh, too bad. Merchant of Venice, Act 4, Scene 3, and then she'll send your ass to fry in hell with all the other crackers. Excuse me, please. And as I left the house, I would always hear Big Papa say, Lucy, your daughter's got a mouth on her. Well, no sense in wasting good gumbo. Pass me your plate, Mama. And Aunt Mary would come up to Uncle Peck, Peck, go after her, will you? You're the only one she'll listen to when she gets like this. She just needs to cool off. Please, honey. Grandma's been on her feet cooking all day. All right. And as he left the room, Aunt Mary would say, Peck's so good with them when they get to be this age. I don't suppose you talk in the family. Does it help that I'm in Don't you dare make fun of this. I'm not. <laughs> There's nothing funny about this. Although, <laughs> I'll bet when Big Papa's about to meet his maker, he'll remember the Merchant of Venice. I have to get away from here. You are. Very soon. Here, take this. I hate... This family. Your grandfather's ignorant. And you're right. He's gonna die soon. But he's family. Family is... Family. Grown-ups are always saying that. Family. Well, <laughs> maybe when you're a little bit older you'll understand what we're saying. So, family is another acquired taste? Like, French kissing? Um, come again? You know, at first it really grosses you out, but in time you grow to like it. <laughs> Girl, you are a handful. Uncle Pack, you have the keys to your car. Just Would you want to go? No, you. no, please. I, I just want to drive alone. When can I see you alone again? Tonight. Shifting forward from first to second gear. There were a lot of rumors about why I got kicked out of that fancy school in 1970. Some say I got caught with a man in my room. Some say as a kid on scholarship, I fooled around with a rich man's daughter. I'm not telling, but the real truth was, I had a constant companion in my dorm room who was less than discreet. Canadian VO, a fifth a day. 1970, <laughs> Nixon recession. 
I slept on the floors of friends who were out of work themselves, took factory work when I could find it. A string of dead end day jobs that didn't last long. What I did most nights was cruise the beltway and the back roads of Maryland where there was still country, past the battlefields and farmhouses, racing in a 1965 Mustang. And as long as there was gasoline for my car and whiskey for me, the nights would pass. Fully tanked, I would speed past the churches and the trees on the bend, thinking just one notch would be all it would take and yet some reflex took over. <laughs> my hands on the steering wheel in the nine and three o'clock position. I never so much as got a ticket. He taught me well. You and the reverse gear. Back up, 1968, on the Eastern Shore, a celebration dinner. Feeling better, Missy? The bathrooms here are really amazing, Uncle Peck. They have these little soaps instead of borax, and they're in the shape of shells. <laughs> well, I'll have to take a trip to the gentleman's room just to see. How did you know about this place? This inn is famous on the Eastern Shore. It's been here since the 17th century, and I know how you like history. It's great. And you've just completed your first legal long-distance drive. You must be hungry. I'm starved. I suggest a dozen oysters to start, and then the Crab Imperial. You might be interested to know the town history. When the British sailed up this very river at the dead of night, you see outside where I'm pointing? They were going to bombard the heck out of this town. But the town fathers were ready for them. They clepped up all of the trees with lanterns. So the British thought that they saw the town lights and they aimed their cannons too high. And that's why this inn is still open here today. That's a great story. Would you like to start with a cocktail? You're not, you're not gonna start drinking, are you, Uncle Peck? I'm not. I've told you, as long as I'm with you, I'll never drink. I asked, if you'd like a cocktail before dinner. It's nice to have a little something with the oysters. But I'm not legal. We could get arrested. They're, <laughs> Uncle Peck, they'll never believe that I'm 21. So? We are here to celebrate your driver's license on the first try. You know, this establishment reminds me a lot of places back home. What does that mean? In South Carolina, you know, like here on the Eastern Shore, they're, uh, European. Not so puritanical. And they're very understanding if gentlemen wish to escort very attractive young ladies who might want a before-dinner cocktail. If you want one, I'll order one. Well, sure. Just one. A mother's guide to social drinking. A lady never gets sloppy. She may, however, get tipsy and a little gay. Never drink on an empty stomach. Avail yourself of the bread basket and generous portions of butter. Slather the butter on your bread. Sip your drink slowly. Let the beverage linger in your mouth. Interspersed between interesting and fascinating conversation. Sip, never slurp or gulp. Your drink should always be three quarters full when his glass is empty. Stay away from ladies' drinks. Drinks like pink ladies and slow gin fizzes, daiquiris, Long Island iced teas, oh, margaritas, pina coladas, mai tais, planters punch, white Russians, red Russians, black lush Russians, blue balls, melon balls, hemorrhages, hurricanes, and hummingbirds. In short, stay away from anything with sugar and anything with those little umbrellas in the drink. Get your vitamin C from fruit. Mm. Don't order anything with voodoo or vixen in the title or sexual positions in the name like missionary or the dead man's screw. 
<laughs> Believe me, those are lethal. I think you were conceived after one of those. Drink instead like a man. Straight up or on the rocks with plenty of water in between. And never mix your drinks. Stick with one all night long like the man you came in with. Bourbon, gin, or tequila till dawn. Damn the torpedoes and full speed ahead. I hope you're all having a pleasant evening. Is there something I can bring you, sir, before you order? I'll have a uh, plain iced tea, and the lady would like a drink, I believe. Very good. What would the lady like? Is there... Is there any sugar in a martini? None that I know of. That's what I'd like then. A dry martini. And could we maybe have some bread? A drink fit for a woman of the world. Please bring the lady a dry martini. Be generous with the olives. Straight up. Right away. Very good, sir. Your glass is empty. Another martini, madame? Yes, thank you. So, why did you leave South Carolina, Uncle Peck? I was stationed in D.C. after the war and decided to stay. Go north, young man, someone might have said. <laughs> what did you do in the service, anyway? I, uh, I just did, uh, this or that. Nothing, like, heroic or spectacular. But did you see fighting? Or, or go to Europe? I started at the Pacific Theater. It's really nothing interesting to talk about. It is to me. Oh, goody. I love the color of the swizzle sticks. Um, what are we talking about? Swizzle sticks. Do you ever think about going back? To the Marines? No, to South Carolina. I mean, well, uh, we do go back, you know, to visit. No, I mean to live. Not very likely. It's better if my mother doesn't have a constant daily reminder of her Disappointment. <laughs> Are these floorboards slanted? Yes. Floors are very slanted. I think these are the original floors. Oh, good. Don't leave your drink unattended when you visit the ladies room. The modest operandi is to spike an unsuspecting young girl's drink with a mickey when she leaves the room to go powder her nose. But if you do, feel you've had more than your sufficiency of liquor, do visit the ladies' room often. Mm, pop your head out of doors for a refreshing breath of night air, or if you must, wet your face and head in tap water. Don't be afraid to dunk your head in if necessary. A wet woman is still less conspicuous than a drunk woman. When in the course of human pursuit, oh. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary, go to a corner stall and insert the index and middle finger down your throat almost to the epiglottis. Divulge the contents of your stomach by such persuasion, and then wait a few moments before returning to your beau who has been waiting for you at the table. Don't be shy or embarrassed. Even in the finest of establishments, there's always one or two debutantes in a corner stall their beauty purses tossed willy-nilly, sounding like cats in heat, heaving up the contents of their stomachs. Oh, I wonder what it is they do in men's rooms. So, why is your mother disappointed in you, Uncle Pat? Every mother in Horry County has great expectations. <laughs> could I, uh, um, could I have another Martini, please. 
think this is your last one. <laughs> Wait, the name of the county where you grew up is Hori? <laughs> I think your mother should be proud of you. Well, Missy, e, she uh, wanted me to do, to be everything my father was not. She wanted me to amount to something. But you have, uh, you've amounted a lot. I'm just a very ordinary man. I'll bet your mother loves you, Uncle Peck. Thank you. The service was exceptional. Please keep the change. Thank you, sir. Will you be needing any help? I think we can manage. Thank you. With judicious planning and several trips to the ladies' room, your mother once outdrank an entire regiment of British officers on a goodwill trip to Washington. <laughs> Every last man of them milk toasts. How'd they ever kick Hitler's goons, huh? No match for an American lady. I could out drink every man in here under the table. Oh, and one more, one more thing as a last resort. When you go out for a night on the town, be sure to wear a skin tight girdle. So tight that only a surgical knife or an acetylene torch can get it off of you. That way, if you do pass out in the arms of your escort, he'll get rubber burns on his fingers before he can steal your virtue. Vehicle failure. Even with careful maintenance and preventive operation of your automobile, it is all too common for us to experience an unexpected breakdown. If you are driving at any speed when a breakdown occurs, you must slow down and guide the automobile to the side of the road. How are you feeling, Missy? I'm so far to the car, Uncle Peck. God, it's like the lanterns that the British fired on. Okay, I think we are going to try a more direct route here. Are you dizzy? Don't look down, we're almost there. Does your stomach hurt? Okay, we're just going to settle in here until things stop spinning. What are we doing? You're just gonna, we are just both gonna sit here until your tummy settles down, okay? That's nice upholstery. <laughs> Do you um, think you can go for a ride now? Where are you taking me? Home. You're... You're not taking me upstairs? There's no room at the inn. <laughs> Did you want to go upstairs? Or home? This isn't right, Uncle Peck. What isn't right? Mm, what we're doing is wrong. It's very, very wrong. Mm. What are we doing? We're just going out to dinner. It's not nice to Aunt Mary. You let me be the judge of what's nice and not nice to my wife. Now you're mad. I'm not mad. I just... I don't know. I thought you understood me a little bit. I I think you're the only one that does. Someone's going to get hurt. No. Have I forced you to do anything? Uh, I guess not. We are just enjoying each other's company. I've told you nothing is going to happen between us until you want it to. Do you know that? Yes. Nothing? Is going to happen until you want it to. Do you want something to happen? 
I know. Then I'll wait. I'm a patient man. I don't mind waiting. I've been waiting for a long time. Mm, someone's gonna get hurt. No one is going to get hurt. Are you sick? Sleepy. Alright, just stay here a second. What are you, what are you doing? Getting something from the back seat. Wait, 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 where are you going? sleep. Idling in the neutral gear. I get back once or twice a year supposedly to visit mom and the family. Truth is, ish. <laughs> oh, I miss this first of all. There's this smell in the low county where the Swamp and the fresh inlet join the seawater. Scent the sand and sea press that I haven't found anywhere yet. I don't say this very often up north because it'll just play into the stereotype that everyone has. But I have to tell you, I didn't wear shoes in the summertime until I was 16. <laughs> it's unnatural down here to pen up your feet in leather. So go ahead, you can take them off. Let yourself breathe. It'll really make you feel better. We're gonna aim for some pompano today. And I have to tell you, they're a shy and mercurial fish. It takes patience and psychology. You have to believe that it doesn't matter if you catch one or not. There's some uh, beer in the cooler next to the crab salad effect. So just help yourself if you get hungry. Are you hungry? Thirsty? Taller if you are. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to lean over the bridge like that. Pompano feet in shallow water, you don't want to get too close. They're shy and frisky little things. <laughs> Hold up. Check your line. Yep. Something's been munching while I've been talking. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Take your sand flea, and we take the hook, and yep, yep, right through his little sand flea rump. <laughs> okay, you want to keep the sand fleas back to the wall. Cast it in, just like I showed you. Damn good! Yes! <laughs> I can take the pop no now. Saute with some pecans, some butter, a little bourbon. Okay, now. Just let it lie on the ground. Now reel, jerk, reel, jerk. Just look, 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 look at your line. Look at your line, something's calling, okay? So, so, hook up your rod, not too sharp, okay? Now hook it. Go ahead here, now easy, easy, reel, now rest. Let it play. Reel, rest, play it out. There you go, yes! <laughs> That's a pompano! Oh man, I can't believe it. You are an official fisherman now. Pompano are the catch. We are going to have ourselves a delicious little, uh, what? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how much pain a fish feels. You can't really, um, Think too hard on that. Come on now, come on. don't cry. Come on, the other guys are gonna see. No, no. It's okay. You're just real sensitive. That's all. And I think I think that is wonderful. Your age. Okay, you want to throw it back in? You do. Okay. Okay. Grab the pliers. Yep, just uh, go ahead, cut the line, and you just drop them in right over there. No. No, I'm not mad, okay? It's just, 
just for fun. Have fun, yeah. It's all good. See, see, look. He's gonna swim on back to his lady friend and tell her what such a terrible day it had, and then she's gonna stroke him with her fin until he feels better, and then they are both gonna do something that's gonna make them all good and tired. <laughs> I don't want you to feel ashamed about crying, okay? I'm not gonna tell anyone. I can keep a secret. All men cry. They just don't tell anyone or uh, show anyone they're doing it. There's nothing that you could do that would make me feel ashamed of you. Do you know that? Okay. Look, you want to just pack it up and call it a day? You know, I, I think I remember. There's this uh, old tree house that I used to stay in for days. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still there. It was last time I checked. But it's a secret place. You can't tell anyone we're going up there, least of all your mom or your sisters. Yeah, we can uh, climb up there and have ourselves a little beer, some crab salad... How's that sound, baby? Uh, Robert? Bobby? Robert! When making a left turn, you must downshift while going forward. Three women, three generations, sit at the kitchen table. On men, sex, and women, part one. Men only want one thing. But what? What is it they want? And once they have it, they lose all interest. So don't give it to them. I never heard of the luxury... You know, I never had the luxury of the rhythm method. Your grandfather is just a big fool. A big fool every morning, every evening. And he used to come home for lunch every day. My God, Grandma. Your grandfather only cares that I do two things. Have the table set and the bed turned down. And in all that time, Mother, have you ever experienced... Now, my grandmother believed in all the sacraments of the church to the day she died. She believed in Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny until she was 15. But she didn't believe in... Orgasm! That's just something you and Mary have made up. I don't believe you. Mother, it happens to women all the time. Oh, now you're going to tell me about the G-Force. No, Grandma, I think that's astronaut. Well, Mama, after all, you were a child bride when Papa came and got you. You were a married woman and you still believed in Santa Claus. It was legal what Daddy and I did. I was 14, and in those days, 14 was a grown-up woman. Oh, now we're off on Grandma and the rape of the Sabian woman. Well, you were the one in such a big hurry. Picked your grandmother out of that herd of sisters just like a lion chooses a, the gazelle. Lump, slow, flaky gazelle, dawdling at the edge of the herd. Your sisters were too smart and too fast and too scrawny. The family story is that when Big Papa came for Grandma, my Aunt Lily was waiting for him with a broom. And she beat him over the head all the way down the stairs as he was carrying out Grandma's hope chest. And they were mean, especially Lily. Well, you were robbing the baby of the family. I still keep a broom handy in the kitchen, and I know how to use it. So get your hand out of the cookie jar and don't spoil your appetite for dinner. Out of the kitchen. Just one thing a married woman needs to know how to use. The rolling pin or the broom. I prefer a heavy cast iron fry pan. They're great on a man's head, no matter how thick the skull is. Yes, sir. Your father is ruled by only two bosses. Mr. Gut and Mr. Peter, and sometimes, first thing in the morning, Mr. Sphincter Muscle. It's true. Men are just like children, just like little boys. Men are bulls. Big bulls. They'd still be crouched on their haunches over a fire in a cave if we hadn't cleaned them up. Coming in smelling of sweat. Looking at those naughty pictures like boys in a dime store with a dollar in their pocket. No matter to them what they smell like, they've got to have it right then on 
on the spot. Right there, nasty, vulgar, primitive, hot. And just about then, the big papa would shuffle in with, What are you all cackling about here? Stay out of the kitchen. This is just for the girls. Lucy, you better not be filling mama's head with sex. Every time you and Mary come over and start in about sex, when I ask a simple question like, what time is dinner going to be ready? Mama snaps my head off. Dinner will be ready when I'm good and ready. Stay out of this kitchen. Defensive driving involves defending yourself from hazardous and sudden changes in your automotive environment. By thinking ahead, the defensive driver can adjust to weather, road conditions, and roadkill. Good defensive driving involves mental and physical preparation. Are you prepared? 1979, a long bus trip to upstate New York. I settled in to read when a young man sat beside me. What are you reading? He asked. His voice was that miserable equivalent of vocal acne. Not quite falsetto and not tenor either. I glanced aside view. <laughs> he was appealing in an odd way. Huge ears at a defiant angle springing forward at 90 degrees. He must have been shaving because his face was speckled with nicks and stupid. <laughs> I have a class tomorrow, I told him. You're taking a class? I'm teaching a class. He concentrated on lowering his voice. Uh, I'm a senior at Walt Whitman High. The light was fading outside, so perhaps he does. I felt his interest quickly. Five steps ahead of the hopes in his head, I slowed down, pretended surprise, waited, acted at listening, all the while knowing we would get off the bus, he would just then seem to think to ask me to dinner, he would chivalrously insist on walking me home. He would continue to converse in the street until I would casually invite him up to my room and I was only in a second moment of conversation and I could see the whole evening before me. And dramaturgically speaking, after the faltering and slightly comical first act, there was the very briefest of intermissions and then an extremely capable and forceful and sustained second act and after the second act climax and the gentle thing more, <laughs> before the post-play discussion, I lie on my back in the dark and I thought about you, Uncle Pat. Oh, oh, this is the allure. Being older, being the first, being the translator, the teacher, the epicure, the already jaded. This is how Taken. Good defensive driving involves mental and physical preparation. Were you prepared? In the hallway of Francis Scott Key Middle School. She's coming. <laughs> Jerome! Jerome, are you all right? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I can't breathe. I, get a little bit, get a little bit. Uh, he needs oxygen. Can you help us here? What's wrong? Do you want me to get the school nurse? Oh, no, no, I, I, I'm okay. I, I just, I get this way when I'm, I'm around an allergy trigger. Golly, what are you allergic to? Foam rubber. <laughs> <laughs> oh, rage is not attractive in a girl. Really? Get a sense of humor. Jerome, creep, cretin, chrome magnon. You and the reverse gear.
on Men, Sex, and Women, Part 2. You're being mighty quiet, Missy. Cat got your tongue. I'm just listening. Oh. Just thinking. Oh, yes. Little Miss Radar ears soaking it all in. Little Miss Sponge, Penny for your sauce. Does it, when you do it, you know, theoretically, when I do it, and I haven't done it before, I mean, does it hurt? Does what hurt, honey? When I, when a girl does it for the first time with a man, does it hurt? That's what you're thinking about? Well, just a little bit, like a pinch, and there's a little blood. Uh, don't tell her that. She's too young to be thinking those things. Well, if she doesn't find out from me, where is she going to find out? In the street? Tell her it hurts. It's agony. You think you're going to die, especially if you do it before marriage. Mama, I'm going to tell her the truth. Unlike you, you left me and Mary completely in the dark with fairy tales and told us to go to the priest. What does an 80-year-old priest know about lovemaking with girls? <laughs> it's not fair. Now, see, she's getting upset. You're scaring her. Good. Let her be good and scared. It hurts. You bleed like a stuck pig, and you lay there and say, Why, oh Lord, have you forsaken me? Uh, it's not fair. Why does everything have to hurt for girls? Why is there always blood? It's not a lot of blood, and it feels wonderful after the pain subsides. You're encouraging her to just go out and find out with the first drugstore Joe who ties her milkshake. Don't be scared. It won't hurt you. If the man you go to bed with really loves you, it's important that he loves you. Why don't you just go out and rent a motel for her, Lucy? I believe in telling my daughter the truth. We have a very close relationship. I want her to be able to ask me about anything. I'm not scaring her with stories about Eve's sin and, and snakes crawling on their bellies for eternity and women bearing children in mortal pain. If she stops and thinks before she takes her knickers off, maybe someone in this family will finish high school. Mother, if you and Daddy had helped me, I wouldn't have had to marry that no good He son. was good enough for you on a full moon. I hold you responsible. You could have helped me. You could have told me something about the facts of life. I told you what my mother told me. A girl with her skirt up can outrun a man with his pants down. And when I turned to you for a little help, all I got afterwards was... You made your bed, now lie on it. Were you prepared? You and the reverse gear. How can you hear yourself think? 1967, Beltsville Agricultural Farms. The initiation into a boy's first love. Now, of course, my favorite car will always be the 56 Bel Air Sports Coupe. Now, Chevy sold more than the 55s, but the 56, a V8 engine with Corvette option, 225 horsepower can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in 8.9 seconds. Long after our mother's tits, but before a woman's breasts. Yeah, super turbo fire. <laughs> what a power pack. Mechanical lifters, lightweight valves, dual exhausts. After the milk, but before the beer. A specific intake manifold, heavy lift camshafts, and the tightest squeeze Chevy had ever made. <laughs> After he squeezed his way down the birth canal, but before he's pushed his way back in, the man falls in love with the thing that bears his weight with speed. I want you to know your car inside and out. Are you there? What? A little bit. You're drifting. I need you to concentrate. Oh, sorry. All right, get into the driver's seat. Okay. Now, show me the first thing you're going to do when you get in the car. I don't know, Uncle Park. Come on now, what's the first thing you want to adjust? My bra strap? A little bit. What's the most important thing to have control of on the inside of the car? Oh, that's easy. The radio. I adjust it from Mama's old fart tunes to like, you know, something that's like... Radio off. 
right now, when you're driving in your car with your license, you can fiddle with the stations all you want, but when you're driving with a learner's permit in my car, I want all your attention to be on the road. Yes, sir. Okay, now the seat forward and up. Do you want a cushion? No, I'm good. Okay, you should be able to reach all the switches and controls. Your feet should be able to push the accelerator, brake, and clutch all the way down. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, the side mirrors. You want to be able to see just a bit of the right side of the car out of the right mirror. Can you? Turn it out a little more. Okay, how's that? A little more. That's good. Now the left side. Again, you want to be able to see behind you with the left side. Adjust until you feel comfortable. Okay. Next, I want you to check the rear view mirror. Angle it so you have a clear vision of the back. All right, now lock your door. Make sure all the doors are locked. <laughs> but then I'm locked in with you. <laughs> Don't fool. All right, we're locked in. Okay. We'll worry about the air vents and the defroster later. I'm teaching you on manual. Once you learn manual, you can drive anything. I want you to be able to drive any car, any machine. Manual gives you control. In ice, if your brakes fail, need more power, okay? It's a little harder at first, but then it becomes like breathing. I put your hands on the wheel. I never want to see you driving with one hand, always two. What? I'd... What is it now? If I have two hands on the wheel, how am I going to defend myself? Okay, listen. Listen up close. We're not gonna fool around with this. This is serious business. I'm never going to touch you when you're driving a car. You understand? Okay. Hands on the nine o'clock and three o'clock positions gives you maximum control and turn. Okay. Now, I just want you to relax and listen to me a little bit, okay? I want you to take your hands and lift them up for just a second. Just look at them. These are your two hands. While you are driving, your life is in your hands. I don't have any sons. <laughs> You're the nearest to a son I'll ever have. And I want to give you something. Something that really matters to me. There's something about driving that when you're in control of the vehicle, just you and the machine and the road that nobody can take from you, a power. I feel more myself when I'm in my car than anywhere else. That's what I want to give to you. There's a lot of assholes out there. Crazy men, arrogant idiots, drunks, angry kids, geezers who are blind. And you have to be ready for them. I'm going to teach you how to drive like a man. What does that mean? Men are taught to drive with confidence, with aggression. They're in control of the road. They drive defensively, always looking out for the other guy. Women tend to be... patient, polite, to hesitate. And that can be fatal. You are going to learn to know what the other person is going to do before he does it. If there's an accident and 10 cars pile up, people get killed. You're gonna be the one to steer through it. To put your foot on the gas if you have to and be the only one to walk away. I don't know how long either of us are gonna live a little bit, but we're for damn sure not gonna die in a car. So if you're gonna drive with me, you're gonna take this very seriously. I will. 
I want you to teach me to drive. Good. You're going to pass your test on your first try. Perfect score. At the end of these four weeks, you're going to know this baby inside and out. Treat her with respect. Why is it a she? Good question. It doesn't like it. have to be a she, but when you close your eyes and you think of someone who responds to your touch, who performs just for you and gives you what you ask for, <laughs> I don't know, I guess I always just see a she, but you can call her whatever you like. I closed my eyes and decided not to change the gender. In every man's home, some zone of the house is set aside. It might be the attic, or the study, or the den. And there is an invisible sign, as if from the old treehouse. No girls allowed. Away from the female eyes, lace doilies and crochet. A man keeps his toys. The bark is pinups, the tackle, the smell of tobacco and WD-40, a dash of A rum. Here, he keeps his secrets. It might be a violin or a saxophone a drum set or a dark room, and the stacks of Playboy. Here, in my aunt's house, it was the basement, Uncle Peck's turf. What? Keep it going, let's do it one more time. Okay. In every man's home, some zone of the house is set aside. It might be the attic, or the study, or the den. <laughs> and there's an invisible sign, as if from the old tree house. No girls allowed. Away from female eyes, lace doilies, and crochet, a man keeps his toys. The Vargas pinups, the tackle, the smell of tobacco and WD-40. <laughs> smell of bay rum. Here, a man keeps his secrets. It might be a violin or a saxophone, a drum set or a dark room, and stacks of Playboy. Here, in my aunt's home, it was the basement, Uncle Peck's turf. Nineteen sixty-five. The photo shoot. Are you cold? The light should heat up some in a few minutes. Aunt Mary is at the National Theater Matinee with your mother. We have time. But what if <laughs> And so what if they return? I told them you and I were gonna be working with my camera. They won't come down. Look, are you sure you wanna do this? I said I'd do it, but I, I know. I know. You've drawn the line. That's right. No frontal nudity. <laughs> Heavens, girl, where did you pick that up? I read. And I read Playboy for the interviews. Okay. Let's just try some different music. I, I love this. I didn't know you listened to this. <laughs> I'm not dead, you know. Do you like this song? <laughs> Good. Good. Now listen. At professional photo shoots, they always play music for the models, okay? I want you to enjoy the music, to listen to it with your body, and just respond. Respond to the music with my body? Right. Almost like dancing. Here, let's get you on the stool first. But nothing showing. Nothing showing, just a peek. Okay? Yes. I'm going to keep talking to you. Listen without responding to what I'm saying. I want you to listen to the music. Sway, move your torso and your head. I've got to go check the light meter.
but nope you'll be watching no 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 i'm not here just my voice pretend you're in your room all alone on a friday night with your mirror and the music feels good just move for me a little bit that's it that looks great okay yeah keep doing that yeah yeah all right lift your head up a little bit more good good keep moving add a girl you are a very beautiful young woman do you know that no i don't know that <laughs> listen to the music well you are for a 13 year old girl you got the body of a 20 year old woman would die for the boys in school don't think so the boys in school are just little neanderthals in short pants you're 10 years ahead of them in maturity it's gonna take a while for them to catch up girls turn into women long before boys turn into men why is that I don't know a little bit, but it's a lesson for men. Why don't you keep moving? Try arching your back on the stool, hands behind you, and throw your head back. Yep. Oh, ooh, great. That one was great. Turn your head away. Same position. Beautiful. I think Aunt Mary is beautiful. My wife is a very beautiful woman. Her beauty does not cancel yours out. All women in your family are beautiful. In fact, I think all women are. You're not listening to the music. All right. Turn your head to the left. Good. Now take the back of your right hand and put it on your right cheek, your elbow, angle it up. Now slowly, slowly stroke your cheek, draw the back of your hair with the back of your hand. Good. Good. One hand above, behind your head, stretch your body. Smile. Good. Good. A little bit. I want you to think of something that makes you laugh. I can't think of anything. Okay. Think of uh, Big Papa chasing Grandma around the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. Both hands behind your head. Good. Good. Great. Hold that. You are doing great work. If we keep this up in five years, we'll have a really professional <laughs> portfolio. What do you mean in five years? Well, you can't submit the Playboy until you're 18. Wait a minute. You're joking, aren't you, Uncle Peck? Heck no. You can't get in the Playboy unless you're the very best. And you are the very best. I would never do that! Why? There's nothing wrong with Playboy. It is a very classy magazine. But I, I, I thought you said that I should go to college! Wait a little bit. It's nothing like that. Very respectable women model for Playboy. Actresses with major careers, women in college. There is an Ivy League issue every I, single... I'm never doing anything like that. You show other people, other men, the, the, what I'm doing. Why would you do that? Any boy around here could just pick up, just go to the stop and go and buy... Why would you ever want to, to, to share? Whoa! Whoa! Come on, little bit, just listen to me. Little bit, listen. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing. I'm very proud of you. I think you have a wonderful body and an even more wonderful mind. And of course, I want other people to appreciate it. It's nothing shameful. But this is something that I'm only doing for you. This is something that's just between us. Yes, it is. And if in five years you still feel that way, it will remain that way, okay? I know that you're not going to do anything you don't feel like doing. But do you want to stop now? I've only got a few more shots in this roll. I don't want anyone seeing this. I swear to you, no one will. I'll treasure this. But you're only doing this for me. A little bit. Open your eyes and just look at me. Come on, just open your eyes, honey. If I open my eyes... If I look at you, if I look at the camera, you'll know what I'm thinking. No, I won't. You'll see right through me. No, I won't. I just want you to look at me, all right? Then I just... I want you to 
just listen. Okay? I love you. Do you know that? I have loved you every day since the day you were born. Yes. Cool. Implied consent. As an individual operating a motor vehicle in the state of Maryland, you must abide by implied consent. If you do not consent to take the blood alcohol content test, there may be severe penalties, a suspension of license, fine, community service, and a possible jail sentence. Idling in the neutral gear. My husband was such a good man. Is, is such a good man. Every night he does the dishes, and the second he comes home, he's taking out the garbage or doing yard work, lifting the heavy things, I can't. And everyone in the neighborhood borrows pack. It's true, <laughs> women with husbands of their own, men who just don't have Peck's abilities. There's always a knock on our door on cold mornings when someone needs a jump start, when someone needs a ride to work or help shoveling the sidewalk. I'll look out and see Peck without a coat on, pitching in. I know, I'm lucky. The man works dawn to dusk, and the amount of overtime he does every year. <laughs> My poor sister. Every Christmas dinner, I come in with a new stole, diamonds, tickets to Bermuda. <laughs> I know he has troubles, and we don't talk about them. I wonder sometimes what happened to him in the war. Men who fought in World War II didn't generally have rap sessions to talk about their feelings. Men in his generation were told to keep quiet about it and get on with their lives. And sometimes I can just feel him fighting against the trouble. Whatever he has burrowed deeper than the scar tissue but we don't talk about it. I know he's having a bad spell because he'll come looking for me in the house and hang around until it passes. And I keep my banter light. We'll talk about new recipes or sales or gossip. I think domesticity is a bomb for men who are lost. And we'll just sit listening to the ticking of the clock in his well-ordered living room until it passes. I'm not a fool. I know exactly what's going on. And I wish you could just feel how hard Peck fights against it. And what he really needs is to see me standing on the shore, believing in him, knowing he won't go under, he won't give up. And let me say this about my niece. She's a sly one, that one is. She knows exactly what she's doing. She's got Peck twisted around her little finger and thinks it's all a big secret. Yet another one who's using my husband until it doesn't suit her anymore. Well, I'm counting the days until she goes away to college and manipulates someone else. And then they'll come back to me again and he'll sit in the kitchen while I bake or beside me on the sofa while I sew in the evenings. I'm a very patient woman, but I'd like my husband back. I'm counting the days. You and the reverse gear. Uncle Peck? I didn't know where you'd gone to. Don't you want to sit with us for a while? No, I'd rather do the dishes. You're the only man I know who does dishes. I think it's nice. Oh, my wife has been on her feet all day. So is your grandmother and your mother. I know. 
Do you want some help? No. You can help just by talking to me. Big Papa never does the dishes. I, I think it's nice. Well, I think men should be nice to women. Women are always working for us. There's nothing particular manly in wolfing down food and then sitting around in a stupor while the women clean up. It looks like a really neat camera that Aunt Mary got you. It is. It's a very nice one. Did Big Papa hurt your feelings? What? Oh, no. It doesn't hurt me. Family is family. I'd rather have him picking on me than... Don't pay any mind to it, little bit. Are you angry with us? No, little bit. I'm, I'm not angry. We missed you at Thanksgiving. I, I did. I missed you. <laughs> well, there were things going on. I didn't want to spoil anybody's Thanksgiving. Uncle Peck, please don't drink anymore. I, I'm not overdoing it. I know. Why do you drink so much? Well, a little bit. Let me explain it this way. Um, there are some people who have a, uh, a fire in their belly. I think they go to work on Wall Street or they run for office, and then there are people who have a fire in their heads, and they become writers or historians. You. <laughs> You've got a fire in your head. And then there are people like me. Where do you have a fire? I have a fire in my heart. And sometimes the drinking helps. There's got to be an other things that can help. I suppose there are. Does it help to talk to me? Yes, it does. I don't get to see you very much. I know. You could talk to me more. Oh? I could make a deal with you, Uncle Pack. I'm listening. We could meet and talk once a week. You could just store up whatever's been bothering you during the week, and then we could talk. Would you do that? As long as you don't drink. I'd meet you somewhere for lunch or for a walk on the weekends, as long as you stop drinking. And we could talk about whatever you want. You would do that for me? I don't think I'd want Mom to know. Or Aunt Mary. I wouldn't want them to think. No. No, it would just be us talking. I'll tell Mom I'm going to a girlfriend. To study. Mom doesn't get home until 6, so you can call me after school and tell me where to meet you. You get home at 4? We can meet once a week. But only in public. You've got to let me draw the line. And once it's drawn, you mustn't cross it. Understood. Does that help? Yes, very much. I'm going to go join the others in the living room now. Merry Christmas a little bit. Merry Christmas, Uncle Peck. Shifting forward from second to third gear. Nineteen sixty nine Days and Gifts A Countdown A note September third, nineteen sixty nine. Little bit. You've only been away two days, but it feels like months. Hope your new dorm room is cozy. I'm sending you this cassette tape. It's it's the new model, so you'll have some music in your room. Also the music you're reading about for class, uh, Carmina Bur Carmina Burana. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Only 90 days to go. Peck. September 22nd, a bouquet of roses. A note. Miss you like crazy. 69 days. September 25th, a box of chocolates, a card. Don't worry about the weight gain. You still look great. Got a post office box. Write to me there. 66 days. Love, your candy man. October 16th. A note. I'm trying to get through the Jane Austen you're reading. Emma. Here's a book in return. Liaisons Dangereux. Hope you're saving time for me. 
Scrawled in the margin, the number 47. November 16th. 16 days to go. <laughs> Hope you like the perfume. Having a hard time reaching you on the dorm phone. You must be at the library a lot. Won't you think about me getting you your own phone so we can talk? November 23rd, a letter. Little bit, so disappointed you couldn't come home for the turkey. Sending you some money for a nice dinner out. Nine days and counting. November 18th, little bit. Got a package returned to the P.O. box. Have you changed dorms? Call me at work or write to the P.O. I'm still on the wagon, waiting to see you. Only two weeks more. Shifting forward from third to fourth gear. Why don't you sit? I don't want to. What's the champagne for? I, uh... <laughs> I thought we might toast your birthday. I'm so pissed off at you, Uncle Peck. Why? I mean, are you crazy? What did I do? You know, you scared the holy crap out of me. Sending me that stuff in the mail. They were gifts. I wanted to give you some little perks your first semester. Well, then what the hell were all those numbers about? Huh. Only 44 days to go. Just two more weeks. And then just numbers. 69, 68, 67, like a, a freaking serial killer. This is me you're talking to. I was just trying to raise your spirits, trying to celebrate your birthday. My 18th birthday. I'm not a child, Uncle Peck. You were counting down the days to my 18th birthday. Yeah, so? Yeah, so? So, statutory rape is not in effect when a young woman turns 18. You and I both know it. Look, okay, I think that you're misunderstanding. Mm, I think I understand all too well. I know what you want to do five steps ahead of you doing it. Defensive driving 101. Then why did you want to meet here instead of the restaurant? I don't want to have this conversation in public. Fine. 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 We got a lot to talk about anyway. Yeah, we do. Can I, can I have some of the champagne? Um, <laughs> of course, madame. I didn't know what you'd uh, prefer, so I just got you the best. Quick, a little bit. Your glass. Let me grab some ginger ale, my bubbly, and toast to you. Oh, sorry, Uncle Peck. Um, let me have another. Uh, Uncle Peck, uh, maybe you should join me in the champagne. You, you want me to drink? It's not polite to let a lady drink alone. Well, Missy, if you insist. Just the one. Uh, it's been a while. Okay. Then I'd like to propose a toast to you and your birthday. Woo! <laughs> I'm uh, not used to this anymore. <laughs> you don't have anywhere to go tonight, do you? No, I'm all yours. God, it's so good to see you. I'm so used to talking in my head. I'm used to seeing you every week. It's been so long. I don't know where to begin. I, I, how's school? I, uh, school's hard. Harder than I thought it would be. I'm in the middle of exams and papers. And I, I don't know, Uncle Pike. Yeah. Hey, uh, you'll pull through. You always do. Maybe. Might be flunking out. A little bit. You always are thinking the worst, but when the going gets tough, you, you, hey, go easy on that stuff, okay, honey? Is it very expensive? 
I mean, only the best for you. The cost doesn't matter. Champagne should be sipped. Look, if you're having trouble in school, you could always, you know, just uh, come home for a little while. No, no. Uh, thanks, Uncle Peck, but I'll figure some way out of this. You're supposed to get into the scrapes your first year away from home. Right. <laughs> How's Aunt Mary? Fine. I, uh, how about the new car? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's real nice. What is it again? It's a Cadillac El Dorado. Well, I'm, I'm really happy for you, Uncle Peck. I got it for you. What? I always wanted to get a Cadillac, but I told myself, Peck, wait until a little bit's old enough. I thought you might like to drive it, too. Why would I drive your car? Because it's the best. And I want you to have the best. Listen, I'm going to... Look, I've been trying to think about how to say this, like... Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm... You you first. Sorry. Okay, uh... Well... Since you're leaving, it's just made me realize how much I miss you. Talking to you and being alone with you. I've really come to depend on you. It has been so hard to get in touch with the distance and you're never in when I call. I guess you've just been like uh, living at the library or whatever, but uh... No, no, but the problem is I, I haven't been in the library. Okay, well that doesn't matter point is, I just, I, I hope that you've been missing me as much, too. Um, Uncle Peck, I've been thinking a lot about this, and I, I came here tonight to tell you that, um, I'm not doing very well. I can't concentrate on my work, and I'm getting very confused, and, and now that I'm away, I've been, I've been going over it, and over it in my head, and I... I don't think we should see each other anymore. Other than with the rest of the family. Are you seeing other men? I... I mean, that's not the reason... I, well, I mean, yes, I, I am. Listen, it's really not anybody's business. Like... Are you in love with anyone else? That's not what this is about. A little bit, you're scared. Your mother... And your grandmother had been filling your head with all kinds of nonsense about men. I see them working on you all the time, and you're scared a little bit. It wouldn't hurt you if... If the man that you went to bed with actually loved you. And I have loved you. Ever since the day I first held you in my hand. And I think that everyone's just gotten you so frightened about something that should be just like breathing. Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't see you anymore. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Just co- listen to me. Listen to me a little bit. Listen, just listen to me. Come on. Look at me. Come on, open your eyes, honey, and just look at me. Honey, just open your eyes. All right, then. And I just... I want you to listen. I'm going to ask you this once of your own free will to just lay down in the bed with me, our clothes on, and just lay down with me, a man and a woman, and I just want to hold each other. Nothing else. And before you say anything else, I just want the chance to hold you. Because sometimes the body knows things that the mind isn't listening to. And then after I've held you, then I want you to tell me how you feel. You'll just hold me. Yes. And then you can tell me what you're feeling. All right. 
that yes, but just hold, nothing else. Now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? I've got to get back. A little bit. Did you like... Did you feel... Nothing? No. Nothing. Do you... Do you think of me? No. I'm 45 years old. That's not old for a man. I can't stop thinking about you. I can't concentrate on my work. I just want you to think about what I'm going to ask you. I'm listening. I want you to be my wife. This isn't happening. I'll tell Aunt Mary I want a divorce. We're not blood related. It would be legal. What have you been thinking, Uncle Peck? You are married to my Aunt Mary. She's my family. You, you've gone way over the line. <laughs> um, Family is... Family! Uh, uh, I'm leaving. Um, now? I'm not seeing you again. I'm not coming home for Christmas, so... Uncle Peck, I... I'm... Go home. Go home now, to Aunt oh, Mary. I just, uh... I just, uh... I think I need a real drink. <laughs> I never saw him again. I stayed away for Christmases and Thanksgivings for years after. It took my uncle seven years to drink himself to death. First he lost his job, then his wife, and then, finally, his driver's license. He retreated to his house and had his bottles delivered. One night, he fell down the steep basement stairs. My Aunt Mary came by to leave food on the porch, and she noticed the papers and mail uncollected. They found him at the bottom of the stairs just steps away from his dark room. Now that I'm older, there are things I would have liked to ask him. Like, who did it to you, Uncle Peck? How old were you? Were you 11? You and the reverse gear. The summer of 1962, on Men, Sex, and Women, Part 3. It is out of the question, end of discussion. But why? A little bit. We are not discussing this. I said no. But I could spend an extra week at the beach. You're not telling me why. Your uncle pays entirely too much attention to you. He listens to me when I talk, and he talks to me. He teaches me about things. Mama. He knows an awful lot. He's a small town hick who's learned how to mix drinks from Hugh Hefner. Who's Hugh Hefner? I am not letting an 11 year old girl spend seven hours alone in the car with a man. I don't like the way your uncle looks at you. For God's sakes, mother, just because you've gone through a bad time with my father, you think every man is evil. Oh no, little bit, not all men. We just haven't been very lucky with the men in our family. Just because you left your husband, I still deserve a chance at having a father. Someone, a man who will look out for me. Don't I get a chance? I 
will feel terrible if something happens. Mother, it's in your head. Nothing will happen. I can take care of myself, and I certainly can handle Uncle Peck. All right, but I'm warning you, if anything happens, I hold you responsible. Tired. A little. It's a long drive. We're making a good time. Take a detour over here and see a little scenery. <laughs> Say, I got an idea. Are we stopping, Uncle Peck? There's no traffic here. You want to drive? I can't drive. <laughs> Here you can, I'll show you how. It's easy. I started driving now as your age, don't you want to? But it's against the law at my age. And that's why you can't tell anyone that I'm letting you do this. But I can't even reach the pedals. You can sit on my lap. I'll show you how. I'll push the pedals for you. Did your father ever let you drive his car? No way. You want to try it? Okay. You're just a little thing, aren't you? Alright. Now think of the wheel as a big clock. Put your right hand on the clock where the three o'clock would be, and your left hand on the nine. Am I doing it right? That's right. Now whatever you do, don't let go of the wheel. Let me know whether you want to go faster or slower. Not so fast, Uncle Peck. A little bit. I need you to watch the road. Uncle Peck, what are you doing? Keep driving. Uncle Peck, please, don't, so, don't do this. This isn't happening. Driving in today's world. That was the last day I lived in my body. I've retreated above the neck and I've lived inside the fire in my head ever since. And now that seems like a long, long time ago. When we were both very young, <laughs> One day I'll be 35. It's getting up there for a woman. And I, I find myself believing in things that a younger self vowed never to believe in. Things like family and forgiveness. I know I'm lucky. Still, I'll never know what it feels like to jog or dance, anything that jiggles. I like to watch people out on the dance floor or on the running paths just jiggling away. And I say good for them. The nearest sensation I feel of flight in the body, I guess I feel when I'm driving. On a day like today. It's 5 a.m. <laughs> the radio says it's going to be cool and crisp. I've got 500 miles of highway ahead of me and some back roads, too. I filled the tank last night, had the oil checked. Check the tires, too. You've got to treat her with respect. First thing I do is check underneath the car to see if any toddlers or household cats have strategically placed their skulls underneath my back tires. Nope. Then I get in the car. I lock the doors, turn the key. Then I adjust the most important control on the dashboard, the radio. Now here you go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? When I 
adjust my seat. Fasten my seatbelt. Check the right side mirror. Then left. Finally, I adjust the rear view mirror. And then I floor it. Only 